to introduce Helena Yino, who will speak about local systems and arithmetic geometry. So thank you very much for the kind invitation in this beautiful location. So uh, today you have two actors. Ben, the tremendous actor, TA stands for tremendous actor, <laughs> and myself. And uh, so that is the title, and uh, it is at the core of uh, arithmetic geometry with uh, strong ties to topology and notably to the fundamental group, um, which is directly related to one of the core topics of the conference here, of the summer school, because this is remote PC. So this was the abstract I had uh, given to Mark here to put on the, on the platform of the summer school. And let me repeat, the building block of uh, homotopy theory is a fundamental group of varieties in topology and in arithmetic geometry. We know very little on it. In fact, we will, we will see that we know really very, very little on it. And one way to approach it is via local systems that is linear representations modulo conjugation. And the whole, uh, I and mean, part of the big difficulty of the topic is this word modulo conjugation. In doing so, we lose a lot of information. Still, it yields obstructions for a finitely presented group to be the fundamental group of a smooth complex quasi-projective variety. Among those, there are the ones coming from geometry, that is the motivic ones. We heard at least 30 times already this word motivic. Deep conjectures predict over various fields when local systems should be motivic. So uh, what are geometric groups here? So this is a shorthand for a vast concept. Uh, we will denote a group, uh, we will say that a group is geometric if it arises like this. We have a smooth connected complex quasi-projective variety. We fix a point X and we look at its topological fundamental group. What is that? That's a group of homotopy classes of continuous loops based at X. Up to isomorphism, the group does not depend on the choice of X. In fact, if a pass joins uh, X and Y, then uh, this, uh, this pass establishes an isomorphism between the fundamental group based at Y and the fundamental group based at X. But another pass is of the shape as written here. We make a pass from X to S and then we uh, post-compose with a pass from X to Y. And, uh, we denote by, uh, we drop the notation little x here when we forget, uh, we just look at the isomorphic class. So this uh, conjugation here by a pass from x to s will play a role later on. So now we know by classical uh, topology, I think it goes past two left sheds, but I would not be able to pin down exactly the reference for you today. In fact, someone was asking me very recently to give a concrete reference. I don't have one. But at any rate, the complex points of this uh, algebraic variety here, which I was assume, assuming to be uh, smooth in addition, has a homotopy type of a finite CW complex. And as a consequence, the group here, the fundamental group, is finitely presented. And uh, why is that? Because uh, the generators are the one loops and the two, the, the two cells uh, uh, give the relations between the generators and there are finitely many of those by definition. Any finitely presented group is a fundamental group of a CW complex precisely by what I said, which I don't uh, repeat. And vice versa, the fundamental group of a finite CW complex is finitely presented. So we will say that a finitely presented group pi is geometric if there is a smooth connected complex quasi-projective variety X such that pi uh, is isomorphic to, um, is a fundamental group of X, a topological fundamental group of X. So the general problem uh, which arises is how to recognize the geometric groups among the finitely presented groups. 
So this problem is a problem of a huge magnitude. It is, if you like, in so-called abelian geometry, it is like the Hodge conjecture in complex geometry or the Tate conjecture in arithmetic geometry, etc. We do not even have a conjectural answer unlike for those uh, abelian cases. So we look for obstructions for a finitely presented group to be geometric. Examples. So any finite group is geometric. And uh, uh, this is a theorem which is due to Serre. He says that uh, it's a beautiful construction. Uh, uh, in fact, Serre wrote a seminal article at the end of the 50s in Mexico. Uh, on the topic, and he proved in particular that when you have a finite group, you can let it act uh, freely on a complete intersection of very high dimension and very high degree. And uh, because it is freely, uh, you, can, uh, it, you can look at the quotient and by what Bert was explaining uh, previously, and uh, by the left shed theory, uh, this uh, Complete intersection of very high, uh, of, uh, very high dimension has, uh, is, uh, has trivial fundamental group, and uh, consequently, the quotient has a fundamental group, uh, uh, the group we started with. So in particular, the abelianization of any finitely presented group, z to the power b plus gamma, where gamma is a finitely abelian group, finite abelian group, is geometric as pi 1 is compatible with products, and uh, the torus here uh, has fundamental group Zb. Now, there are way deeper obstructions which are coming from harmonic analysis, which is known under the word, uh, on, under the concept of uh, Hodge theory, uh, which has been developed by Hodge to start with uh, during World War II in '42. The self completions, that means the pronipotent completion of the fundamental group, admits a mixed hot structure. So now, what are local systems? That's the core of our interest here. A local system, this is a representation of the fundamental group, modulo conjugacy, as we said, by GLC. So it may be written uh, by forgetting the little point x, and here we write uh, L lower rho for this conjugacy class. It can be thought of as a topological fabrication in CR vector spaces with transition functions defined by rho, or simply this uh, construction here, we take the fundamental group which is assigned to the choice of the point x here, we look at the product space, which is uh, uh, the, no, not the fundamental group, I, I apologize, the universal cover. We take the, the product space here and we let uh, pi 1 act diagonally via the representation. That gives a topological space, and we can think of this uh, local system as being this topological space. And uh, this construction can be made abstract uh, abstract uh, in the sense that we can replace pi 1 by any finitely presented group. So here is a warning. And uh, since basically one and a half years, wherever I go, I give this warning. And uh, it's an important warning, but it is also true that I could not see it mentioned anywhere before, even though there are dozens and dozens of mathematicians thinking of uh, local systems. The warning is very simple. This is like this. The study of the local systems reflects only a very small part of the fundamental group. Pi 1 is finitely presented. So in particular, if you look at the complex linear representation, it has values in GLRA, where A is a Z-algebra of finite type. But uh, such a A, because it is a, I mean, it's an affine uh, algebra, like we had in the previous lecture by Bert, so such a A always possess, possesses an eladic point. So uh, that means an inclusion of A in an eladic ring. So in particular, with a finite residue field. So uh, the zo-defined representation obtained by post-composition of the restriction of the scalars to A uh, factors through the pro-finite completion of the group we start with, of the fundamental group. 
So this becomes a profinite representation. So it's endowed with a topology, which is a profinite topology. And by the Riemann existence theorem, this group here, the profinite completion, if the top etal fundamental group of X, based at X, at X. But Toledo is telling us that this kernel here is not, may be non-trivial. So in particular, it will be the case that uh, those representations here will never see anything about this kernel. And uh, this is the first problem I pose, not a problem we can solve uh, during the exercise session here, because it's a deep problem, but uh, we know nothing on capital K. I think any new knowledge on capital K would be of interest. What is its representation category? That would be fantastic. So elliptic local systems are defined similarly. Rather than looking at abstract representation, we look at continuous representation, where on the group we look at the profinite completion. We already gave a, a geometric explanation for this profinite completion via the Riemann existence theorem. And on the right, we look at profinite coefficients, those GLR with values in the topological ring, and the topological ring is profinite, it's an elliptic ring. And absolute irreducibility means that uh, as we change, uh, we make best change from uh, this uh, elliptic ring to uh, QL bar, this is irreducible. So now we give a definition which we uh, invented with Johan de Jong, uh, who is a former uh, mas master advisor of uh, Ben, I think. And, uh, uh, and uh, we will see where it leads us. So it's a very simple definition. And uh, because uh, the notion of integrality is, uh, in fact, well established in some sense, but uh, we give a very, very weak version of it. And we say that a finitely presented group pi is weakly integral if whenever there is an irreducible representation as written with complex coefficient, with determinant of finite order dividing some delta, natural number, then for all prime numbers L, so two, three, five, and so forth, there is an absolutely irreducible profinite representation, which is called an elladic representation, with which is absolutely irreducible. I said that already, I apologize, but with determinant of order divided, dividing delta. And the main theorem for today is the following one, and uh, it uses really extremely deep uh, tools. I'm going to mention them immediately, but let me formulate it. If pi is geometric in the sense we introduced earlier, that means it is a fundamental group of some smooth quasi-projective variety of a C, then it is necessarily weakly integral. You have a question? Uh, was it pi uh, hat? Because what is x? There is no x. In yeah. So if pi is geometric, so that means it is a topological fundamental group of some smooth quasi-projective complex manifold, then it will be the case that this pi is weakly integral. I think he was just complaining that in the definition it just said pi hat instead of pi, pi, pi hat. hat. No, a finite, finitely presented group pi is weakly integral. No, uh, what is your question? Uh, look at the definition. A finitely presented group pi is weakly integral. The issue is that you have an x in the definition. No. Yes. Rho hat <laughs> and pi one of x hat. Yeah, I, I think you should just read pi hat, the profinite completion of pi, mapping to GLR. Be the same. Ah, because there is a typo. I apologize. Pi hat. Thank you very much. This was uh, oh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, you too. So maybe you come to the uh, to. No, no, no. There is no relation. You can sit down quietly. It will come later. <laughs> <laughs> the definition makes no sense then, because you're saying for every row there is a row hat, but there's no. You haven't said what the relation is. No, I, I didn't say. I said it's a weakly, it is a weak notion of integrability. 
whenever there is an irreducible in, uh, rep complex representation in some rank with finite determinant of a given order, then it is the case that for any L, there will be an l representation which is absolutely irreducible with determinant of finite order dividing this delta. OK? It's a, it's an existence and it's called weekly. Yeah. So you, th thank you for coming so far, but you don't have to. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Uh, and uh, the corollary of the, def uh, def of the theorem, which uh, Ben just showed, is that uh, being weakly integral is an obstruction for a finitely presented group pi to be geometric. And, uh, and why is that an obstruction? Because I have to give you, uh, I have to give you um, a finitely presented group. So you can show the examples here. So, so uh, when I say it's an obstruction, that means they, they are finitely presented groups which are not weakly integral. Consequently, they cannot be geometric. Consequently, I have found a new obstruction. And now, uh, so I am not going to read that. You can uh, go down. So I ask Emmanuel Broyard, who is really a high uh, specialist of uh, character varieties, to produce whether, whether those examples could exist, finitely presented groups which are not weakly integral. And uh, he produced uh, for me and for Johan, he produced two. And uh, uh, it's an extremely interesting exercise to prove that these examples really are not weakly integral. And I leave that for, to you if you want to do the exercise. It's extremely interesting to understand how it works. So the uh, maybe you show the problem. The problem, can we find for each separate L prime number, a Breuer type example. So we have one for L equals two, one for L equals three, so it's not integral by two, it's not integral by three. Okay, so now we can, uh, uh, why is that lecture two here? So there is a mistake, so it's another, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, maybe, uh, what time is it? Uh, so this is good. So. Uh, the, uh, now I go back to history. So this was the first, uh, the first uh, main theorem I was mentioning, uh, that uh, it is a case that if, if the group is finitely presented and is geometric, I mean, if the group is geometric, then it's going to be finitely presented, then necessarily it's going to be weakly uh, integral. So in order to... Uh, so this is, uh, and, I and I said, I claim it is really an obstruction. So now uh, I will first go back to the more classical obstructions, and the more classical obstructions um, are based on analysis, on harmonic analysis, and more precisely they are based on Hodge theory. And uh, they work uh, well I mean, they give some, in, some uh, information in the case X, uh, we, we lower our ambition rather than looking for some obstructions for pi to be geometric, we say for pi to be the fundamental group of a projective smooth variety, smooth projective complex variety. So this is already, uh, we look among uh, those pies which come from projective varieties. And we have much more tools at disposal which are coming from analysis. And once I will have said that, I want to tell you that the obstructions I was exhibiting before, in fact, we, we construct it and we define, it's based on a completely different cycle of ideas. And in fact, it is based on the Langlands program. And more precisely, it is based both on the arithmetic Langlands program and the geometric Langlands program. So this is really a completely arithmetic 
I mean, the way to prove that uh, the theorem I was saying before, it's a completely arithmetic proof and uses really very strong, strong tools coming from arithmetic geometry. But before doing this, let me recall uh, a more uh, classical topic here. Uh, that's uh, what yields the non-abelian harmonic analysis, which has been developed by Hitching. I should have written Hitching before here, and uh, has been developed in whole generality by Simpson, and this is called the Simpson theory on x uh, connected projective over C. So Simpson constructed via geometric invariant theory, GIT, moduli spaces. The first one is called M Betty, associated to the R. The R is the one which was before. That means uh, in our, so the complex point of this, uh, of this space here is uh, an algebraic variety of finite time, and its complex points are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the isomorphism classes of semi-simple local system of rank R. Then there is M de Ram, and uh, again, it's an algebraic variety of finite type, and uh, its complex points are the, um, uh, the uh, isomorphism uh, are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the isomorphism classes of flat connections, which are semi-simple and of rank R. And then you have the M Dolbo, and this is where the contribution first of itching, and uh, in a way also Narasimhan Seshadri, even though it was uh, hidden, and then um, uh, Simpson. Uh, the complex point of this space here, they, they are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the isomorphic classes of uh, semi-stable in the sense of algebraic geometry, uh, semi-stable Higgs bundles. Um, okay, so uh, now we have all those uh, spaces here. So three spaces, let's say they are all defined in the first move. We can think of them as being all defined over the field of complex numbers. And uh, they don't come uh, completely randomly. The Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, which already appeared in uh, one discussion in a fir uh, former um, a talk here, the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, which, which is a complex analytic correspondence, equates uh, complex analytically the uh, complex points of the Betty moduli space and the complex point of the Dram moduli space. But in addition, on the Dolbo moduli space, there is a so-called hitching map, and you will see that this hitching map, in a way, it's already going to give a very strong topological information on those uh, local systems. This uh, hitching map here is uh, when we have a Higgs uh, field here, so this is uh, maybe a right here, what is a Higgs uh, bundle here. So we have a bundle here, and we have a theta here, and the theta is just an all-linear map. Which goes from the ve vector bundle here to the vector bundle with values in uh, omega 1. And it is integrable in the sense that uh, I can post-compose uh, again with theta and then with a wedge of uh, one form, so I land here. And then uh, this one should be zero. But uh, you know, when you have such a map here, you can take the symmetric functions. And uh, symmetric functions are going to be sections here of the symmetric forms here. And uh, this is precisely what is written, and uh, the idea of uh, hitching here was uh, to make out of this uh, map, a complex, uh, in fact, an algebraic map, and a very important information here is that this map is, in fact, uh, proper. So the fibers are compact. And uh, the last piece of information here, which is related to the topology, is that if I look at the complex points of this Dolbo moduli space and I compare it to the complex points of either the Betty moduli space or the Durham moduli space, then they are uh, uh, isomorphic also, but only as real analytic uh, man, uh, uh, varieties. 
So Ben is going to say something about this. So uh, this has already tremendous consequences. For example, if n equals zero, so if you are on a variety which does not have any symmet non-trivial symmetric differential forms, uh, I should say here, of course, uh, uh, for sim zero, this is uh, functions. There are always functions, so I should write one here. Uh, then uh, maybe uh, Ben, would it be yeah? So uh, you see this map here, so it goes to zero, but this is proper. So the Dolbo modular space is proper. But on the other hand, I was telling you that uh, real analytically, so in particular topologically, it is isomorphic to either the Betty modular space or the Dora modular space. Let us focus on the Betty modular space. The Betty modular space, it's very easy to write what it is because uh, we have a finite presentation of our group so we are looking at representations. So we look for any generator of the group. We look at the matrix, and then we look. Uh, the relations will be uh, will give equations with those matrices, and then we have to mod out by the action of the group, which are telling, uh, which is telling me that I look at uh, uh, isomorphic classes, conjugacy classes. So this is a quotient of an affine variety. By a GIT quotient, so this is affine. So if n is zero, then uh, this space which is proper is isomorphic topologically to a space which is affine. So that means it's zero dimensional, algebraically. And uh, we have, uh, this is very interesting because we have plenty of examples of those. Uh, for example, Shimura varieties of exceptional type by Margulis superrigidity, they fulfill this. So this is a very interesting example. In fact, it has, uh, you, might, you may have heard of the uh, André Hort uh, conjecture, which has been solved uh, recently, in particular using what I'm, what I'm lecturing about. Um, then this Margulis superrigidity plays a key role here, because all local systems are rigid. So now, so some of this extends to the stable locus on all, all sides here, which are then fine moduli. And uh, so, um, for Betty, those points are called the irreducible local system for the Betty modular space. For the Durham modular space, those are called simple flat connections. For the double modular space, they are called stable and not only semi-stable Higgs bundles with vanishing chain classes. And uh, as I mentioned already, that here is already an obstruction for finitely presented group pi to be geometric with x projective, not in general. Its affine character variety, we discussed already on this, should be real analytically endowed with a proper map H to an affine space. So it's quite difficult to formulate. It's a very abstract obstruction, so to speak. But it exists. And uh, the correspondent holds further if we fix the determinant as we did before. But the theory in this shape, unfortunately, does not quite extend with the tools I need to the non-proper case. So we have to assume that x is projective in order to, to continue. So. Uh, now, because of the ambition we put at the beginning uh, to look at geometricity in the sense that we look among all quasi-projective varieties, uh, which are smooth over C, and not only among those which are uh, projective, uh, we have to decorate our modular spaces and to fix some conditions at infinity. And uh, so fix X here, a good compactification, so what is a good compactification? First, the existence is due to uh, Hironaka. And uh, it means that x was smooth, x bar is projective, smooth. And the complement of x in x bar is a strict normal crossing divisor. And what is a strict normal crossing divisor? It's a divisor which consists of a union of irreducible components which themselves are smooth, and they cut transversally. We fix the delta as we had before, which is the order of the determinant of the uh, local system. 
And we also fix the, uh, some eigenvalues at infinity, of which we assume that they are roots of unity. So that means, uh, and what is the role of those eigenvalues? That's the eigenvalues of the monodromies at infinity. As we know, the fundamental group of X here receives the conjugacy uh, classes of small loops around the, com around the components di at infinity. So uh, let's say, call them gamma i. When we are going to look at representation of the fundamental group of X, so gamma i, we have, uh, we have images on the conjugacy classes, but the local system is taken modulo conjugacy. And uh, then we say that uh, we have quasi-unipotent monodromy at infinity. If those matrices we fix here modulo conjugacy are quasi-unipotent. And what does that mean, quasi-unipotent? It's equivalent to saying that the eigenvalues here are roots of unity. So uh, we can define here, we can decorate the modular space we talked about let, uh, earlier on, the Betty modular space, by fixing this delta and fixing those lambda ij at infinity. So for any component i here, the j goes from one, one to r. They are r eigenvalues at infinity. Now, uh, GLR acts uh, via conjugacy on this, uh, and uh, this Betty modular space with decoration here, I put all meanings that I don't single out uh, the reducible ones, is a GIT quotient, geometric invariant theory quotient. Again, it's an affine finite type variety defined now over the number, a number ring, and the number ring is the one I said before. It is spanned by, uh, over Z, by uh, the roots, the delta roots of one and uh, the um, lambda ij at infinity. Now, its stable points over C correspond to irreducible local systems with the delta lambda ij conditions. And its point over C, uh, which, uh, not the stable ones, but all of them, correspond to semi-stable simple local system with the decoration uh, delta lambda ij. We then consider, and that's going to be a notation for the time to come, we consider the open uh, inside of this big modular space which, uh, co which contains uh, uh, irreducible uh, points and non-irreducible ones. We consider the open MB here, which is a complement in this big modular space of the closure of the Zariski I'm sorry, I'm a typo here, of the Zariski closure of the non-absolutely irreducible points in characteristic zero. So uh, in fact, this uh, nice uh, formulation is uh, due to Ben yesterday. He said it's better to express it like this. So what does that mean here? It's a uh, largest, uh, you look at the uh, characteristic zero fiber, so this M is defined over O, this number ring here, and uh, you look at the characteristic zero fiber, so over the field of fraction of O, and then over any field above this field of fraction of O, then uh, you obtain only um, points here are only irreducible local systems over C when you go to, to C. And, uh, but, uh, when, as you, when you look at uh, points of this scheme with values in the finite field, then maybe they are no longer irreducible. Thank you. So we have a structure map here, and a uh, structure morphism, and we denote it by epsilon. Now, you remember in the first part of the lecture, uh, we talked on the uh, main group theoretic uh, theorem, which says that if M, if pi, I apologize, which is finitely presented is geometric, then necessarily it is weakly integral. Now, this theorem is going to appear as a corollary of a theorem which is of geometric nature, and for this reason I call it for our lectures main geometric theorem, that in case epsilon is dominant, that means it hits in the base a characteristic zero uh, point of spec O, 
then it is subjective. And uh, that answers um, uh, Bert's uh, concern uh, when he came as far as here. Uh, the existence of the local system over C, which is irreducible and has a finite determinant, is telling us that epsilon is dominant. It just says that because uh, uh, you have uh, you take a C point of spec O of those moduli, and now the theorem is telling you that uh, this morphism is subjective. Okay, thank you very much. So now uh, let me uh, say a nice uh, corollary of that. Um, if we assume that uh, so this characteristic zero fiber here over C, this complex fiber of this Betty moduli here is uh, uh, non-empty, as in the main geometric theorem. I mean, that would be another way to say the same thing as dominant. It's non-empty. But we assume, in addition, that it is irreducible. It's a strong assumption. But let us make this assumption. Then the corollary which is due, in fact, uh, it's a famous uh, uh, theorem in uh, Diofontaine approximation theory. The corollary is that uh, this Betty moduli space possesses an integral point. That means a point with values in Z bar. What does that mean? That means that there is, uh, what, what does that mean in spite of the fact that those moduli are not um, fine? It is true what I'm going to say. It is equivalent to saying that there is a local system, topological local system, with values in G, L, R of Z bar. So maybe I'll write here. So that means IE here, there is a rho from pi 1 with values, so we, it's in values in GLRC. So those are our assumptions, but in fact, it's here. It's values in GLR Z bar, so that's the algebraic closure of Z inside of the algebraic numbers, as is called algebraic integers. And uh, it, which is absolutely irreducible. So it's irreducible here, and it has a determinant delta, and it has uh, this decoration lambda ij uh, at infinity. So uh, the corollary of the main geometric theorem is in case just by accident, uh, this modular space here is geometrically irreducible, is non empty and geometrically irreducible, then we do have an integral representation here, an integral local system. The moment we do have an integral local system, then of course you can localize here for any uh, place here of uh, the numbering O, which is a base here, we can uh, here look at the, at the composite here. And then we obtain an, an, an eladic local system as in the definition of weak integrality. But uh, the weak integrality, so the weak integrality implies that in fact there is a z-bar local system here. Um, on our variety, which is irreducible and which has this finite determinant, but uh, only under this assumption that the uh, modular space here is irreducible, not in general. We can go further. And the problem here, it's a general problem, is that uh, maybe I can, um, yeah, we do not know when it is irreducible. But uh, if uh, this space has an integral point, then so does the modular space here uh, where we don't put any decoration at infinity. 
because uh, this modular space here with decoration at infinity maps to the modular space without decoration at infinity. So no condition at infinity. So the first one has uh, an integral point, so, so does the second one here. And, uh, and in fact, we can even put no condition on the determinant, so does this uh, modular space uh, without even uh, condition on the determinant. Notice there's a huge difference here between the modular space here with decoration lambda ij and the modular space with decoration only delta and no decoration. Why? Because the modular space here, the Betty modular space with decoration uh, delta and uh, with no decoration depends only on the fundamental group. It's a purely topological invariant. But the modular space with lambda ij here is, uh, as we discussed, as uh, you were asking, it depends on x. Because otherwise, I don't know what is infinity. I don't know what loops gamma i are in pi if I don't have the geometry. So there is a huge difference between those two modular spaces, even though the notation is very, uh, very similar. But uh, we are, in some sense, in the Diofontan approximation. You can say, OK, I'm interested in producing z bar points of this modular space, with de which depends only on topology. And uh, then, uh, by the theorem I was telling you, by the main geometric theorem, then we can conclude that in case this uh, moduli space, which depends on just on the fundamental group itself is irreducible, then it possesses an integral point. Because I can apply Rumeli theorem, which is telling me that uh, if I have an irreduci absolutely irreducible variety, defined over a number ring, and if this absolutely irreducible variety has a local point for any uh, valuation of the ring of definition, then it has a z-bar point. That's the theorem which is behind. So uh, we can conclude we no longer need uh, this modular space which depends on more than the fundamental group. We, can we, can, we have a Diofontaine corollary here for the modular space which depends only on the fundamental group. For example, if x is an affine curve, then we know its pi 1 is 3. And that's basically the only variety in the world which we know, uh, for which we know its fundamental group. I mean, a, a big mystery. You go to the line, you ask him something about the fundamental group, he's going to answer to you. But we know nothing on the fundamental group. We know only that it is free on curves. And if the curve is projective, we have this, uh, uh, this uh, equations with uh, two G generators and one relation. That's it. We know nothing. We have no, absolutely no concrete uh, knowledge about it. So let us take this example where we know. We take an affine curve, so this is free. So we know the Betty modular space in that case, which depends only on the fundamental group. Because what is, you have a free group, then uh, in order to define the modular space, you just assign to any generator of your free group, you assign a matrix. So that gives you, before you do the GIT quotient, that means before you forget the point in which you base your, uh, your fundamental group, that gives you, uh, the, that give you uh, an affine variety, which is an open in an, in an affine space. So it is absolutely irreducible. And now you make a GIT quotient of this absolutely irreducible variety, so it's absolutely irreducible. So in that case, you see that uh, you do have a z-bar point of the, um, of the quotient here. And then it's a general problem. You can ask to approach little by little. You can say, what, is, what about an Artin neighborhood? So we know since Artin that we have a um, basis of the risky topology, which consists of the called Artin neighborhood. What are they? They are successive fabrication in curves. So let's say, Either it's an affine curve, or if you have a surface and it's going to be a surface which is fibered, 
in affine curves over an affine curve and dimension three and so forth. So when you compute the fundamental group of such, it's a successive extension of three groups. Uh, uh, finitely uh, generated in that, uh, finitely generated. So you can try to ask about uh, is that the case that you always have an integral point here, an integral local system um, uh, when you, uh, on an art in neighborhood. So I cannot answer uh, this question here, but I have to mention that this kind of discussion um, is uh, propagated, so to speak, by uh, Sarnak, uh, Peter Sarnak, uh, who proved himself, I discussed quite a lot with him, and uh, he proved himself in one very uh, specific example earlier on that he does have in a very, in fact, not him, but a student of his, um, he has an integral point here. So not only Z bar point, but Z point or uh, quadratic extension of Z and so forth. And now let me tell you the initial dream with Johan de Jong. So I'm telling you here a corollary, so, so we are talking on this uh, Diophantine corollary of this main geometric theorem. And, uh, but only under the assumption that the modular space here, when we forget the decoration here, is, uh, absol is uh, absolutely irreducible. So the dream we had, and that's why I, I wrote it a very tiny little here, it's a dream we never could approach. The dream we had with Johan was to prove or disprove that uh, this uh, fabrication here over spec Z, I mean, if we put decoration, we have to go to a finite extension of Z in order to take into account the delta we had and the decoration lambda IJ we have at infinity, then uh, we uh, can raise the question, in fact, it's a question which has been raised by Johan, uh, whether this morphism is pure in the set of Gruson Peskin. So now, I'm not going to tell you what that is because this goes really beyond the scope of, uh, of our summer school here. But uh, uh, this uh, property of purity is not the standard property of purity uh, in cohomology. It's a different uh, notion of purity, but it has a corollary that uh, it has, uh, it is shaped in a way that uh, if the variety, if the morphism is pure and the variety has local points, for all places, then it will have a global point. So, uh, but we cannot prove that, and the reason why we cannot prove that is precisely, uh, is going to show up later. It is in our use of the arithmetic part of the Langlands program, of the Langlands duality. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, let me uh, mention De Jong's, so now it's a bit, uh, let me mention De Jong's conjecture. And, and then stop here. I will not use it, so it's, uh, it's not a very good uh, strategy to uh, end, end up a lecture with a difficult concept uh, without using it. So I will have to repeat it last time, but next time, but uh, nonetheless, it's, uh, it's quite important. So uh, De Jong, so Johan, uh, predicted the following. It was, uh, it's called the De Jong conjecture, and uh, before I try to explain what that is, let me show the use of the De Jong conjecture. If the De Jong conjecture is true, and this has been proven later on by, uh, in, I mean, some specific cases have been proven by uh, Shekhar Kare and Gepard Buckler, using uh, the methods uh, uh, of measure, and, uh, but the general case, so they are really arithmetic methods, but the general case, uh, they could not access the general case, and the general case has been proven by Getzkori, uh, at least if P is at least three, so let us forget that, uh, using the geometric Langlands program. And in fact, uh, maybe there, is a, there will be a revival because he, himself together with a team of uh, 10 people, he managed to prove, uh, the, I mean, he announced and wrote down uh, five articles on the geometric uh, Langlands uh, duality. So, uh, but uh, this, this he could prove without the whole program. And let me, so the fact that, uh, um, so this Dayong conjecture is shaped in such a way that uh, Johan could prove 
without knowing his conjectures that if the conjecture is true, then he will be able to construct so-called arithmetic local system. I will insist next time to, uh, on the definition of arithmetic local system, but I wanted to say why it is good for. So let me start. So uh, it predicts that, uh, so we are, the variety now is no longer a complex variety, but it's a variety which is defined over a finite field. And let us say the finite field has characteristic P, I call it FQ, and in addition, I have a finite field KV of characteristic L. So I have P and Q, P is for the scheme, and L is for the representation I'm going to look at, and X here for this part of the speech here, L, L, X is not assumed to be smooth, not necessarily assumed to be smooth. So uh, she assumes that uh, if uh, we have uh, such a representation here, uh, which is defined over FQ here, uh, the, the, for, if we have a representation from X over FQ with values in GLR of this uh, equal characteristic uh, um, local ring here, and from it, the integral closure, uh, then uh, it is a case that, uh, 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 I think maybe I forgot something, but at any rate, uh, yeah, it, I should assume that it is geometrically, that means if I restrict it, uh, as to a local system to x over fp bar, I assume that it's irreducible, then if this is the case, and it is uh, finite. So it looks very bizarre. Uh, the first time I saw that, uh, uh, I was uh, very confused. Uh, how could he look at such representations here? So I repeat, he has a representation with values in GLR of uh, KV of uh, T, the so Laurent power series ring over KV, which, has, which is a finite field of characteristic L, and from it, the integral closure. And he assumes that, uh, which I forgot to write, the restriction to X over FP bar is irreducible, that the conclusion is that it's finite. And he deduces what I said, so let me say. So uh, now, if we have, uh, uh, this variety, so let us assume for simplicity, just for a minute, that X is projective, then I don't have to say what them means. So assume X is projective for, because uh, I don't have time to explain what them means, I will do that next time. So let us assume X is projective, so then uh, we look, uh, we lo we, so I explain what is a corollary here. We look at uh, representation here of the fundamental group of X over FP bar with values in GLR of this finite characteristic L field here. And I assume it is absolutely irreducible. Then uh, the uh, corollary of uh, uh, De Jong here, of the De Jong conjecture, forget measure, it's too complicated to explain, but the corollary is that I will be able to, uh, and I assume I am able to lift this representation to some representation uh, with values in uh, uh, L-adic ring, the residue field of which is precisely KV. Let us assume that. So if I assume that, then the zoo define L-adic representation is absolutely irreducible. Why? Because the residual representation is absolutely irreducible. So this, this, there is no mystery here. So I assume there is one. And then uh, the De Jong's conjecture is going to tell us that the moment I have one, I have one which is arithmetic. And what does that mean that it is arithmetic? That means that it descends to x over fq. So uh, this De Jong conjecture is going to play a role in what we explain together with the length -length program, the arithmetic length, -length program, that means over a, a curve over FQ, and the geometric length, -length program, that means a curve over C. So I stop here for today. Thank you. <laughs>